Dark Knight's Metal number one, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Um, I haven't got to say that on a on one of these shows because they've not done an issue together since before. No, Rebirth. is this nice, Capullo's big return to DC? Because he's, he's taking some time off. So, so I, ah, I guess it was okay. <laughs> I know what you're doing, and I don't like it. Like I have, I have one phrase. I have one phrase that I want to say: Justice League Megazord. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I was edging more towards Voltron, but whatever. I never watched Voltron as a kid. It was a Megazord. Yeah, I, never... <laughs> yeah, I don't like Voltron either, but I just wanted to poke at Pete. <laughs> I, oh, I, was, I want to examine this glorious creation for a second, right? Cause I, well, I, I like how we're starting with the Megazord. That's how you tell Pete's driving the conversation here. Look, mm-hmm. look we'll get to all the other juicy bits. I, I know Connor's waiting to fawn over the last page and who's showing up and... Whatever else is happening. A mountain appeared from nowhere. How are we sleeping on that? We're getting to it. We're getting to it. But we've got a Megazord to talk about first. What uh, about the rest of the prologue? Okay, they're on war, A New War Moon, which referenced the Action Comics run because uh, like he mentions yeah. that Mongol fought, fought Zod. And, oh, I see, he says fought. I'm like, no, he got the shit kicked out of him. He got kicked off the planet. Like, he got punched into space. <laughs> it wasn't really a fight, but yeah. sure, Batman, sure. Uh, then again, he wasn't there. Maybe Superman was sugarcoating. He's like, he's tr- maybe maybe Superman cared about yeah. Mongol's feelings. He didn't want to feel embarrassed for him. So he's like, no, no, it was more of a fight. It was, you know, more equal. I love that they've all got this armor on that kind of dampens their specific powers. Yeah. yeah. But it looks so cool. And Mongols... Yeah, and, and some classic Snyder overwriting where he he adds a little... Not, not overwriting in the bad way, but, like, he mentions, like, oh, the... The dust of a thousand crushed red suns for Superman's armor and <laughs> a thousand, yeah. not just one red sun, a thousand red suns. A thousand. And how do you crush it, no, no, a no. gas giant? It's That's a weird. few thousand. A few thousand. Okay. Uh, and then, like for um, for for Flash, they're like Dominator boots that they yeah, they, some they, of that. They, yeah. Slaves, and then for Wonder Woman, it was the serpent something or other. It was like a yeah, something from one of the Gorgons from one of yeah. uh, Medusa's sisters, yeah. and and so that was a fun little thing. Uh, and then he they reference him, you know, like Green Lantern has a black hole built into his glove, so the light keeps getting sucked into it. And a black hole again, again, talk about Snyder just putting these weird yeah. concepts into things. There's yeah. a miniature black hole in a glove. Yeah, yeah but it's yeah. cool as shit, so I don't give a damn. I'm not yeah. complaining, I'm just saying, it's a pretty wacky out there concept. Also, probably, I, two of my favourite lines, one of them came from The Flash, the other one came from the editorial box. Oh yeah, where, see the 90s? See the 90s? Yeah. I was like, okay. This is, you know, we give the other company a lot of crap because reasons, but it seems like they take things a bit too seriously. This is one of two big major events, and you can feel that Snyder and Capullo are just having fun. Yeah, just from the outset. Well, right. this, this is this is what I love about this prologue. This whole thing builds to this Justice League Megazord, right? And it's like it all builds to that because basically, the, Mongol's got this toy man, and he's built him, he's built him like these robots that are kind of based on the Justice League, right? So they're all in the Justice yeah. League colors. And Batman has this crazy idea uh, that that he the toy man's intentionally like built in a, a way for them to exploit it. So he's like, let them eat you, let them swallow you, and they all get swallowed, and it's like. And like he's built into the system that they'll all join together and come as one, and that's when you turn the page. It ends the big prologue scene with this Megazord, and then after that, it's the title page. It's like DC Metal. That that's the intro to yeah. this. It's like this is how big and epic this is going to be. Like, this is them yeah. saying it's a statement. Yeah, this is the starting I, I, point. I love even just that that title page where it's it's really simple. It's just metal logos, and it just says a DC Comics event. It's really sleek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, feel, it feels like it's making a big statement and big, big impact. I just, can, I, can I talk about the placement of the, the various parts of this Megazord briefly before we yeah. we dive into? Why does Flash have to be the foot? Because he's fast. <laughs> it makes actually makes he makes the most sense that Flash is the foot. Well, I was just following up because it's the the dialogue. And All right, it's, okay. it's so he can kick his ass clearly. Yeah, um, you know, I I actually think it's much funnier that Green Lantern's the groin. Personally, I think that's kind of amusing. He's, he's got the eagle, so he's the crotch. You you realize yeah. it is Hal. Like, yes, it is Hal. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's kind of my point. That's what ba- I mean. Batman's the head. Dude. Makes sense. He's the thinker. Superman is the chest. He's the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I feel like I feel like Cyborg just kind of went with whatever slot was left. Well, he's the arm. He's just 
I, well, I get it, because, you know, he, he's got the, the, the arm already. Okay, okay, sure. So, well, know, I was going to why... say, because that's, he's just their transportation normally, so... Right, but, like, like he, he kind of has that sort of, like, the, the arm yeah. shape that it has there, he kind of has anyway. Mm -hmm. I feel, like, so, I feel yeah. like, I mean, maybe this would have been too much of a reference to the whole, you know, the whole hook hand from the 90s, but I feel like yeah. Wonder Woman and Aquaman should have swapped, and Aquaman should have been the big hook arm. Yeah. For yeah. Funds. Or at least a trident. The, the, the Wonder Woman's the fist. I mean, I get that. But... Spe speaking of the trident, I loved Aquaman's little stick trident. Yeah. Because <laughs> he uses that to activate his robot. He just pokes it in there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that was pretty funny. Yeah, so, right. so that, that's the opening. That's all that is. It was just this big opening yeah. prologue to just say how big this is going to be. <laughs> and then just, like, I, I love Capullo's Justice League. Like, the only time we've got to see him draw them is in Endgame, and it was only for that one issue. So here we get them for an entire issue, and they just they look great. But then he draws them, like, they're heading back to Earth, and it's just like a work group. Like... They're, they're kind of casual. It's it's nothing that you usually see in superhero comics. What what has been um, missing is what, is what I hate mm -hmm. about Brian Hitchie's Justice League is there's never just those quiet, casual moments. And yeah. yet, somehow, they've found a way to put those moments in to an event, which, by yeah. definition, should be the more balls-to-the-wall thing. But no, they've found time. Yeah, that's it. If, if it wasn't in here, you wouldn't, you wouldn't criticise it because you don't necessarily no. expect it in an event like this. Right. Yeah, you could have just turned the page and they were back on Earth. Like you didn't need the scene of them traversing through space in a in a spaceship made by Green Lantern. You the know, Batman thinks he's flying. Yeah, and I love how it's just like you know you're not flying it, man. Like <laughs> this is all me. Uh, but yeah, and uh, I forgot what I was going to say after that. But yeah, oh, they could just skipped it, but it gave a, a, a moment also for some exposition in case people hadn't read the Forge and the casting, which. Is probably my biggest problem with this is because those two were effectively issue zero, they weren't like standalone. Uh, so if you didn't read them, I don't think you're necessarily at a disadvantage, but I think that you, you might. probably should. I, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. this reads okay without them. But like the whole end yeah. of the issue is that Carter Hall's like journal ends, and I'm like that means yeah. very little if you just read this issue. But if you've read all three, of them, yeah. you know, if you read the two prologue issues, then it feels like a yeah. big ending to what we've been reading for the last three months. Right. And I definitely know people that, that skipped them because they're like, well, they're not necessary. Right. Uh, it's it's this problem where they are part of the story, but they're not Capullo, which is why right. that's the only reason they're not is because they wanted to sell this event as this event right. is Capullo. Right. Yeah. And to be fair, it is starting a big way that says this is the start of the main part of the story, but. Yeah, the, the but are very again, relevant. effectively, those those were the setup issues. Those were the countdown yeah. to, you yeah. know, like, in, when, when you collect uh, Infinite Crisis, you throw in countdown to Infinite Crisis. Oh, yeah, that, that, that yeah those, two, those two will be in the hardcover come mid yeah, next year. There's you know, no doubt so about that. Outside of nitpicks from me being the continuity wonk, I thought this issue was close, close to perfect uh, between I the art yeah, I, I liked it yeah. a lot. I, I, I mean, I think there's maybe a bit of an exposition dump, which Snyder kind of suffers yeah. from. But that's well, Snyder, though. Like, yeah, that's, I, I, I feel like it's, that. it's also a case of him trying to catch up people who maybe didn't read those two yeah. issues. Like he feel because yeah. he knows it's not. Uh, you know, some well, people will have skipped them. He's obligated to fill and, them. And in. I know even some DC fans that you have they read those like Challenge of the Challenges of the Unknown don't mean that much to a lot of people because they're not going to dig as deep. As I would have, um, so and even the Hawks. You know, I originally started reading John's uh, Hawks Hawkman series, and I'm not all that familiar with with Hawkgirl. And you know, she shows up here, which I'm sure we'll get to. So we're in full spoilers. So uh, I, I think I think it's so that didn't necessarily about all the stuff land. That's explained, but then you know, yeah. like Challenge of the Unknown. They, they, mm -hmm. But then. The metal men are never even mentioned by name. No, they're just shown, and that's yeah. dope. And, and Will Magnus, and who's the guy that created Red Tornado? I just forget his name. Oh, I can't remember. I never remember. Yeah, it's not Ivo because he did Amazo. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think yeah. No, I like this show a lot. Um, right. I, I think what it achieves really well is a, it feels big. It feels like the big epic start of a story, but much like the uh, what was first, the Forge. Yeah, and uh, much like the yeah. Forge, it really feels like it is part of like. Uh, it, I'm almost disappointed it's not just called something crisis. Like at one point, someone mentioned Dark Crisis. I'm like, 
I almost think Dark Crisis would be a better name. It feels like a crisis. We're dealing with multiverses and whatnot. That so happens when you're too old to go to shows anymore. You don't know what to do. <laughs> I can't go to the mosh pit anymore. I'm too old. Yeah. I'm brittle. But no, this is definitely a crisis. Like, it's a not in name, but in spirit. Yeah. This is like. I feel almost this is more of a uh, in tune crisis than Final Crisis was because at the end of Final Crisis, I mean, go read that, but I'm going to spoil a little bit of it. Not much changed. Like reality got reset, and mm. you know, Batman disappeared uh, through time. But outside of that, not much has changed. Like it, had, it was the least crisisy crisis. Yeah, but it was crisis in name. This is missing the name, and it feels like the implications going forward. Are going to impact comics for the next five years. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be big. And the other thing I like about it, much like that first cast issue, is it really feels like it's part of DC's history. Um, like Hot Girl showing up and having this important yeah. role. Like throwing the Metal Man in the background. And obviously mm-hmm. we see Plastic Man's egg again and all these things. And and that, and that Starman, who I'm not quite sure of his name, but I've, I've seen him in things. Yeah. yeah. He, he's in the picture next to the Blackhawks. Yeah, and obviously uh, Fate's on the page with uh, Plastic Man as well, and like it's, it really feels like it's building into like everything in DCU, and it's it's bringing up things. It brings up Barbatos from Morrison's Batman. Uh, so that was that. I was going to ask. Barbatos was the Bat God, right? The, yeah. He awoken. Mm. Okay. I I couldn't. I ch- not that I try to forget Return of Bruce Wayne, but the less I think about it, the better. It was definitely my least favorite. Well, I didn't actually even read the last second part of Batman Inc. because I wasn't into it, but. Uh, yeah, but certainly of what I did read, Return of Bruce Wayne was my least favorite part of his entire run. Yeah, as am I. Can, can uh, we just point out we've gone this long, you know, talking about this book and you know all the crazy things, and we are yet to mention Batman riding a dinosaur. Yeah, I know. I was. Well, I've not even got to wait talks to Kendra about yet. But just no, no, League. I'm just talking <laughs> about the ridiculous, over the top metal things that we've, okay. been, so, that we've been mentioning. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's Batman riding a dinosaur is pretty metal. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, but yeah, like, like what they set up to how there's all these different realms with DC is because of this energy from the nth metal. Well, before, before, before we, before we even, before we even get to what uh-huh. we're talking about, right, right? So there's a, there's a mountain in Gotham City. Challenger Mountains just appeared in Gotham City. Yeah. They go into the, invest- the Justice League go to investigate it. And that's when Lady Blackhawk and then helmets off. Oh no, it's Kendra. It's hot girl. Yeah. Uh, and Obviously, we've seen in one of the uh, the Forger casting issues that you know Hawkman led a team into Challenger Mountain and they disappeared. Mm-hmm. And the last transmissions that came out of it was, "Don't follow us. There's something evil in here. There's a goddamn dragon. Don't. It's awful. It's evil. Bad." And now it's showing up. So Kendra shows up with her team, bring them to a uh, Black Hawk Island, I think. Was that right? Yeah, in the South Pacific. It, it's and. It explains what they're talking about, and that's when we get to multiverse and like, okay, there's fifty two, it's a set number, matter and antimatter, but there's something else. This metal and like all these locations on Earth, uh, you know, Black Hawk Island, Themyscira, and a few other places. Like they, they are like, yeah, they are like. They brought up Skataris, which is from the Warlord series. The Dinosaur last Island Sk- as well, actually. Dinosaur Island as well. Last time Skataris was brought up was in that horrible series i was forced to read because i'm a continuity wonk called convergence <laughs> so but the fact that snyder threw it in there is just like yeah we're gonna play with all of the history just to, just to compare this to something that matt won't get this but uh, connor will this felt very twin peaks to me these locations around the world that are the right frequency yeah i see what you say that these are the spots yeah i just i was getting that vibe from it which i kind of liked yeah um, cool. But, <laughs> so she's, Shut up, Matt. You make re- wrestling references all the time. Yeah, the card. Speaking of it. the, the oh. Doctor Fate, <laughs> he says the premonitions. I read it as Matt Hardy yelling premonitions, and I lost it for I lost it for about two minutes this morning. And my wife goes, "I don't even want to know." <laughs> Well, I wish I didn't know. Making reference yeah. to shows, I actually I got a big Stranger Things moment because Kendra explains yeah. the dark multiverse by turning over the map she's got out of the multiverse. Yeah. It's like, this is the dark multiverse, and I'm like, it's the upside down! <laughs> but I love that one of was like, all I see is the back of a map. Like, she's just <laughs> kind of like, uh, have some imagination, Diana. Uh, do you know what I like is I like that typically she's the one who will be more like accepting of mystical yeah. ideas and she is the one yeah. 
But to her, that's just so ridiculous. Like, no, it's just I, the I black of a map. She's, she's very literal, though, isn't she? Yeah, like, that's true. She yeah. believes in all this stuff, but it's because she's seen things. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah she hasn't that, that seen works. the Dark Multiverse. No yeah, one's right. seen it. Like, that's kind of the point. Because yeah. Flash well, is like, Flash is like, no one knows multiverse shit better than Flash. And he's no like, one has what? seen it, except for the challengers in Carter Hall, who mm. are back in that, back in Challenger Mountain. Yeah. Like, that's who's in that, those pods, right? Uh, well, we know Red Tornado is for a fact, because he wakes up. Right, but here's the other thing. Here's here's my one nitpick. Well, one of many nitpicks is Red Tornado was in Challenger Mountain, and then they go to Black Hawk Island, and he's still there. They so that, did well, she just wheel him Yeah, I think they, I, th- I think they brought, brought him with, yeah. Okay, because my first read through, I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, Red Tornado, he was there. But then I forgot that they went to... I keep wanting to call it Dinosaur Island because there's dinosaurs, but it's not. It's Blackhawk Island. Yeah, it, yeah. I just figured they, they brought them with because that's why I'm not actually thinking those people alive in the other pods because they don't bring them. Or maybe they did. They're just not in that room. But Red Tornado, they expect See, to. I, I think the fact that we know we're getting the the Hawkman found. That which is why I don't think he's in the pods because that seems more uh, complicated. Yeah, I was just I just assumed they wheeled the whole pod out, you know, because it was yeah. you know, segregated. Okay. Superman's there, like flying, pushing it almost. So I thought they just okay. wheeled the whole thing, and Red Tornado is up first by the nature of who okay. he is. Yeah, because obviously they expect him to wake up because he's not human, so he, he should theoretically still be well, functional. And he was, yeah, and he was set to if anybody opens that door to reawaken and stop them. Yeah. So, and I thought that was interesting too, using him as a sentinel, kind of not not like the X Men sentinel, but like a like a guard. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, no, so she explains all this stuff, and actually, okay, right. So we're fighting this, you know, Barbatos, and she explains that seriously. But that's not really the name that I was scared to say. She explains that basically the prophecies and everything else is pointing to her, like, oh, uh, there'll be a what's the word she uses? Uh, the person who'll let wagon. Uh, the wagon, yeah. The wagon who will let, let Barbatos in um, is the House of Wayne. It is, you know, it's Batman. And as this is where like, they all pull out their guns and point them at Batman. And Hal's just like, are you serious? You thought you could bring Batman here? And tr-? He's already yeah. got halfway off the island at this point. And that's when it comes to him, like, reading the dinosaur. Like, he yeah, had this planned. He says that he'll, he had a ride ready the moment we landed here. And he goes, I can promise you, it's state of the art. <laughs> and then you just see him on a dinosaur. <laughs> And I love that it's Hal that says that because we know they're constantly at odds with one another. Yeah. So yeah. the way I read it was was Hal being like, yeah, of course he has a way out. Like, he had a way out before we even got here. But also, it's like, you thought you could trap Batman. That's yeah. your plan. <laughs> Come yeah. on, lady. Of course, she doesn't get what she wants. Batman gets out, goes goes back home, back to the cave. He's like, Alfred, I've got what I want. And Alfred's, like, pleading with him to, like, bring in the League and tell them what he's found and yeah. everything else. So, you know, Batman's been a stubborn prick here. Uh, so... I think this may be a, a a moral experience for him, where maybe he'll learn that he needs to trust his friends a little bit more. Yeah. Not, not think that he has to save everything Batman himself. Batman has trust issues is a great t-shirt. <laughs> it out there. Because he does. And, I mean, he expects everybody to trust him because he's Batman, but then he doesn't ever reciprocate. Because that's what that whole prologue kind of was, where he's like, no, just trust me, push the buttons and let the, the robots eat you. Yeah. And that seems insane, but they listened. But yes, and now thing, here he's... He, get, he gets away with it so often because he's often right. Yeah. Like, he, he usually yeah. wins, and that's why yeah. it's like, okay. Well, right. yeah, but, and, and I understand that, that they trust him. Like, Superman trusts him. And, you know, but when it comes to him to put trust in others, he's shut, he walls off. Like, mm. you know, so I definitely feel like that's going to come, come into play. So, so he's looking into like he got the fragment of the nth metal, which is what he was kind of there to, there to nab, and uh, mm-hmm. one of the last bits of nth metal on the planet, as far as Ken was aware, and uh, they basically he hears this noise, it's like a tuning fork, and again just to make some comparisons to Twin Peaks, I was like, oh, this is really Twin Peaks, so, like he's hearing a noise, and you know, I thought it was interesting that he used the you know tuning fork though. Yeah, it's a very specific kind of obviously pitch oh, and yeah. frequency. Yeah, but that was also in Infinite Crisis. That's what, right. what yeah, Alexander yeah. Luther created the Crisis Tower for. It was a massive tuning fork. That's right, very and true. We, we saw that not so long ago. He's yeah, got it that's what was in, it's in his cave. It's in the fortress. It's in, it's, in, or it's in the fortress, you're right, yeah. It's in Superman's yeah. fortress. Yeah. The, the cave in the fortress, which I still have issues with. Hey, Batman's got places all over the planet. He's got one in the fortress. You just have to live with that. 
And yeah, the moon. But it made it moon. sound like Superman didn't know about it. That's what I have the problem with. Oh, no, he didn't know about it. He did. Yeah. He, he was like, oh, I asked you to keep this here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the general consensus. People are like, oh, there's a bat cave in the, in the fortress. And it just it drives me nuts, those people. <laughs> I'm just being honest, guys. Also, the guy that created the Red Tornado... This is all just an excuse for me to interrupt with the guy that created Red Tornado. It was Tio Morrow. How do we forget that? Ah, uh, no. Now that you've said it, I'm like, oh, yeah, Morrow. Yeah. 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 I can never have told you his first name, though. No. no. I may have remembered his last name, but I never have remembered his first name. Dr. Madness. Dr. Madness. Dr. Mag- Magnus. <laughs> Anyways, but yes. <laughs> Tuning Fork finds, finds yeah. his bat symbol. And of course, into the, the study. Yeah, and of course, as he's going up there, we're seeing the last parts of the Carter Hall journal, and this is something that Carter Hall has left for him to find. It's mm-hmm. something that's there to like, appear when he needs it, uh, or at this time. Uh, presumably, it's probably linked to a Challenger Mountain showing up. That's probably what's triggered it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he sees this thing, he picks up the journal, he reads part of it, he's like, oh, it's all true, and that's when we get the big ending. So, Connor, since you actually went and read the first volume of Sandman this last week, you'll have more context for this than any either of us do. So... Explain to us who this character is. So this is obviously, as he says here, Dream of the Endless. The Endless are like seven beings that are more than gods. They're like above gods. They're completely immortal. They're, they represent elements of things. You have like death, desire, dream. Yeah, they're, they're, they're motivation kind of. They're ethereal. And these are their personifications, right? Right. Hmm. Yeah. And, and so and th- this was, was this the main character of Sandman? Was this yes, the... this is the Sandman. Okay, I just because I get them all. Look, can I just confused? Can, can, and he didn't look like he didn't look like a Tim Burton character here. So it's because it he's in him. white, not in black, which is very interesting. Like even his his speech. Just, that sh- I've been yeah. reading it. That shape of the speech bubble is the same, except uh-huh. in Sandman it's always black uh, with white text. So I thought it was oh, interesting here. That was interesting. Can I just say, it's called metal. There's been metal reference left and right. I just want to point out that at the end of the first issue of a book called Metal. Enter Sandman. I know. Yeah. It's fantastic, isn't it? It is. Just... And that... Now, I've never read Sandman, and like I had a vague idea who this was. Like, you know, I looked at the, I looked at the image and you know, I'm like, okay, uh, that looks Sandman-y. But like, I've never read yeah. Sandman, so I had to double check. Either. Mm. Yeah. Well, because he doesn't look like the... So most of my interaction with, with The Endless came from reading Wizard coming up before I had comic shops, and they were always going on how great uh gaming was and how great the series was but they would put up the covers and it was just this dude that looked like the crow or from a tim burton movie yeah and this isn't what the dude looked like so i was like well he says he's dream but maybe something in rebirth changed his look you know like yeah he, he does look different like i say like he's all white instead of all black which so is um, if you're unusual. saying these these are above gods what, what if he's outside of like like the universe, like, what if like, he's above he, the multiverse and the dark, the dark verse? Like, he's above all that, and he's like, yeah. what is still all that? He literally lives and rules the realm of dreams. Anything that ever has been dreamt of, any nightmare, that's where he lives. That's what he, well, he feeds on, essentially. Okay. Yeah, and we, we, we kind of skipped over the part that they said that Barbatos will come from the nightmare, and mm. Wayne, the son of Wayne, will be prepared through this process so it almost seems like he's coming to warn bruce yeah because he said you know he's come to he, he says i've come to tell you this nightmare has only just begun oh which actually yeah, re- reminds me we, we, i mean we briefly mentioned the page with fate and like plastic man uh, on it but yeah. i like that it was like uh like people who are like susceptible to picking up messages psychically mm-hmm. Uh, like are, are already starting to feel it, and I actually I, I laughed out loud when it got to the, the plastic man egg, and there was just this exclamation mark next to it. I, I thought it was really interesting because they were talking about the people who I thought it was like you know the people who were connected to the nth metal. So you had fate, and obviously his mm-hmm. helmet, and then that one of the one of the metal men. It looks like and, one of the metal men, yeah. Yeah, and then so and obviously based on the their inclusion earlier on, I assume they're actually got nth metal in them, in it now, yeah. which is yeah, presumably what gives them life. It makes sort. sense, yeah. I mean, that kind of goes against, again, I'm going to de- deep dive into continuity, but what brought them to life was their responsometers, and it was based yeah. around each of their... So e- each metal had its own characteristic. So, you know, like, gold was pure, so he was kind of... That's why he was the leader. And then tin was frail, so he was always the one that's kind of 
you yeah. know, afraid of everything. Look at Matt uh, bringing out the, but, the deep dive here. Yeah, right. Uh, but if it, they do make it that it's based around the Antimetal, if that makes sense, because uh, Kendra said that the Antimetal gives off its own unique energy, and it's energy that's not from here. So that's I mean, why it's... Right. It's a bit of a retcon, ripples. but it's an okay little retcon because it kind of connects yeah. more to the universe. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll, I'll buy Nth Metal way more than Responsometers. Like, you know, like... Yeah, it's the idea that, that like, the, the Nth Metal is kind of their, their spark of life. It connects them. Yeah. yeah. But they, it's they what makes the Responsometer work. Also, and, yeah. this makes me assume, because remember we spoke about how Plastic Man's hiding something inside his egg shape? It makes me think yeah. whoever's in there is Nth Metal, and that's why yeah. he's getting yeah. something picked up. People made a big deal about this, about Dream showing up, because Gaiman has to, like, give permission yeah. And they're like, oh, this is the first time this happened. I was like, no. Death showed up to talk to Lex Luthor in Paul Cornell's run. And... It's, it's still a bit, because obviously there was something recently. I can't remember where it was going to be that was going to pop up and it was going to be something from Gaiman's thing, but they had to change it. Oh, mm. uh, was that a uh, Suicide Squad, like one shot or many? Right, but they oh, had to well. change it. So it, it at wonder. least shows that when, when, they, when he gives permission... He doesn't yeah. just do it regardless. It doesn't seem... Yeah. yeah, it seems like there they maybe like went, okay, we want to play nice with him because we want to use it here. So they they changed this other thing that was maybe going to upset him because it was like a weird version well, yeah, of Yeah, presumably thing. they asked him and he said no. But here, right. they've asked him and he said yes, which means he, right. he okays it with context. He doesn't just go, yeah, sure, whatever. But what do we think this means going forward for the event to get back on kind of the main topic yeah. here? What do we think the endless dream of the endless showing up means for like part of me feels like this will be not like I don't think it will be like an ongoing character throughout the whole thing. I think he'll be here. He'll, no. he'll do what he's here to say to him, and maybe he'll pop up like towards the end again to like you know. He's almost yeah. like a herald. Hmm. You yeah. know, like in the crisis, you had the harbinger that and psycho pirate that would come before. Right. It almost feels that's what Dream's role is here. It does. It makes you wonder, though, like if he's popping up in an issue one, who else is going to be popping up before these six right. issues are done? It's, it's <laughs> something that makes me really excited because it's like if he's here now, how big is this going to be? Mm -hmm. Like that, if that's what you're ending just the first issue on, and it's going to go, hey, yeah, this is going to get worse. Uh, this is this is going to be one hell of a story. I'm, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for the evil Batman. Obviously, I think all the the, the tie-ins and crossovers coming after issue two makes a lot of sense now because it seems like. The evil Batman will come out next issue. That's what it seems like it's going to be. It seems like they're going to show up yeah. next time. Yeah. Uh, and that will lead into all the events. I'm actually really... It's been a while since I've been this excited to not only dive into the event, but also all the tie-ins. Like, I'm, I'm excited about the crossovers. I'm excited about the, the one-shots. Because uh, they, they did a preview of... Uh, you know, they did like, the first three or four pages of a, a yeah. like, book on like, all, all like, the websites. Uh, the Dawnbreaker, the Green Lantern, Dark Batman story. Uh, the first few pages that went up, and it was like the, the, the version... I, I think each of them are going to start with that Batman's origin and how it differs from, like, you know, what uh, we're used to. Right. So, what, yeah. Bruce Wayne's. And, and this yeah. was like, just, just glancing at this 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 preview, um, it seems like right after the death of the Waynes, uh, the ring shows up and, like, young Bruce Wayne immediately has power of the Green Lantern right after. Which, you know, uh, obviously... You give that to a kid and it's like... Yeah, right after that just happened. Kid, yeah. yeah, like, you know. So, I just, I'm, I'm actually really excited to see how all these different Batmen became what they were, like... The Batman who laughs, I'm actually really pumped to see, you know, how that, does that so happen? You shared that out the other day, the, the and I cover. said, no yeah. me gusta. Yeah, and I didn't mean I didn't like it. It scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah, it was, that was a, like one of those to be, images that's so unsettling. To be specific, that cover wasn't for the one shot. That was the cover for Metal Issue 5, I think it was. But it was the Batman oh, who laughs. Oh, okay. And it was, uh, gotcha. it was at least inspired the, by the Dark Knight poster where the Joker's holding the card in front of him. Yeah, well, and he's holding a tarot death card that has the the heads of the Justice League skewered. Mm. With, well, this makes sense yeah. that he's. I mean, I don't know if he's the big bad, like I don't because obviously we keep talking about this big dragon, this big actual Barbados demon. But yeah. Like, yeah, it makes sense that out of the Dark Batman, he's the worst. Yeah. yeah, well, because he's he's Batman's greatest enemy. Yeah, combined. Yeah, right. I I kind of hope we don't see Barbados. I kind of hope that they give him the Lovecraft treatment. I was just going to say, it was really interesting. I was just checking the, the checklist. Um, Team Titans 12 is actually before Metal number 2. They're out on the same day. Oh, interesting. But on the checklist, Team Titans comes first. 
So well, that is interesting. I wonder if that maybe ends with a cliffhanger. Like maybe Teen Titans is mostly its own thing, but the ending of the issue is like the portal opening or whatever it is. Right. And it'll be like a tease for the metal issue that you jump into next. If Titans is first, how is Damien going to react to these evil Batman? Like, I haven't even thought about that till now. Mm. I mean, how, how are all the Bat family going to react? Like, I'm actually kinda... With a sword is the answer for yeah. Damien. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, like, how, how does Batwoman react? How does Barbara react? How does Nightwing? Like, how do all of them react? Like, yeah. There's potential there. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so are we, are we done with Metal? Do we spend enough time on issue one of Metal? I just want to say again, Batman rides a dinosaur. Let's not. Let's just not overlook that. Which is great, but not quite as amazing as the Justice League Megazord. Just, just wait. Yo, a mountain appeared over Gotham for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, Bear Clan, Wolf Clan, Bird Clan. I better see who's in the Bear Clan. No, I'm saving that for Metal Two, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, no, I need. I needs it. The the. A, I love bears. B, I love compartmentalization. Who, who's and in the wolf clan? I don't know. Yeah, but... we're setting up a trilogy here. We're clearly going to get the wolf story and the bear story later. That's that's clearly uh, going to be a thing. Because cause we know the birds, you know? Like, that's a heavy theme, but I got to know. Which, which actually was interesting, because they mentioned that the House of Wayne was was a bird family. It was a bat family that came to the side of good, yeah. to the birds. And that's why they're able to bring Barbatos in. You know, mm, interesting. So I, I, I really like the the ending of Carter's journal where, like, it, one of the last things he says is a, a proud member of the tribe of the bird. Mm. Yeah, thought well, that was nice. Oh. But no, obviously, obviously, I mean, there's probably more. We've not even hit the on, but uh, we'll be talking a lot more about metal over the next few months because c- after issue two, we're going to have a, at least a one shot every week, pretty much for like a good couple of months. So. Yeah, um, it runs till like mid-February, I think. Yeah, so expect a lot of metal talk over the next few months. Mm-hmm.